Today we're looking at the latest release of Crossover Preview, which now allows you to play Windows-only games like Marvel Rivals and Red Dead Redemption 2 on Apple Silicon Macs for the very first time. So if you didn't already know, Crossover Preview is the cutting edge version of Crossover that's not quite ready for a full release, but has been generously made available for testing by any paid Crossover license holder. Just be aware that Preview really is just for testing. If you're looking for stability and customer support, then wait for Crossover 25, which is probably gonna come out in the next few months. So Crossover Preview from December 2024 introduces a whole bunch of brand new features, which I'm gonna be going through today in this video. And I'm also gonna provide a quick basic tutorial on how to get Windows only games like Red Dead Redemption 2 working on Apple Silicon M series Macs as well. So the first substantial feature is the fact that we are now upgrading to the next major release of Wine 10.0. Wine of course is the underlying translation layer behind Proton as well as Crossover and it's the magic which allows Windows games to be translated onto macOS. Secondly, many games are now playable without cross ties. This means that games like Skyrim and Fallout 4 can be installed into a generic Steam bottle without the extra configuration. Game specific fixes have also been automatically applied to titles like Path of Exile 2. Overall, the experience is becoming much more user friendly and Proton like. Thirdly, Crossover Preview now advertises for AVX, which is a CPU feature which has been introduced in macOS Sequoia. This means that many titles that required AVX checks to be patched out by hex editing or alternative EXE files can now run out of the box, including games like Sonic's X Shadow Generations and Yakuza Like a Dragon. And lastly, many titles have now become playable on the latest version of Crossover Preview, including games like Fallout 76, Far Cry 6, Age of Mythology Retold Multiplayer, and also the aforementioned Marvel Rivals, and of course, the most exciting and one of the most requested games that I've been asked to look at is Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, getting this game to work on a Mac must have been a monumental piece of work. And at this early stage, there is a lot of performance that could be improved. Just be aware that in order to get any kind of playable frame rates, you probably want more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. So at least 24 gigabytes in my opinion. Even with my top spec M4 Max with 48 gigabytes of RAM, the performance wasn't amazing, but I'm sure that this will improve over time. And in order to get crossover preview in the first place, you need to be a paid license holder. And don't worry about the cost because I've got you covered. Just click on the link at the top of the video description to get an exclusive 20% off. Or use the coupon code AppleGamingWikiNew to get that discount too. So once you made a purchase of a crossover license and you have logged into your account, you'll see here that there's a button on the left here, which is the preview center. So here, this is gonna be handy information about the preview application. And the important thing here is to look at the downloads section here. So click on downloads, and then we can go ahead and download the latest crossover preview. So click on the zip file here. And then once that has downloaded, what we're gonna do is to go ahead and open this in our finder. So just open our finder, then we'll go to our downloads folder. So now what we can do is double click on the zip file in our downloads folder. It's gonna extract crossover preview. And then what we're gonna do is drag and drop this into the applications folder. And then within applications, we're gonna scroll down until we find crossover preview. Then we'll double click. And then once that's double clicked, we can press the open button to manually open. And that crossover preview is installed. So now what we're gonna do is type in a search for Steam and we'll download the Windows version of Steam. So just click install, and then it's gonna go ahead and create our Steam bottle. So here it's saying in process, just wait for that to finish. Here we're gonna allow the font to install, press yes. So now we're gonna go ahead and go through the Windows Steam setup, press next and install this locally and then press run Steam. Here it's gonna do an update. So now the Steam window has come up here. We're gonna go ahead and log in with our account. We can scan the QR code with your mobile app. So now we are in the Windows version of Steam and we can go ahead and download multiple games. So what we're gonna do now is press the install button and then we're gonna install onto the local drive here. Just click install, accept the end user licensing agreement, and it's gonna go ahead and then download and install the entire game, which is about 120 gigabytes. So this might take a bit of time depending on the speed of your internet. So now that the game's installed, we can go ahead and just do some setup on the crossover. So just to be sure, what we need to do is to select the Steam bottle here that we've created, and we want to use the default graphics settings. And we don't want to be using D3D Metal and we don't want to be using DSVK because both of those won't work. All of this is being done through Wine D3D. So this is going to be the default method here. And ideally we want synchronization to be set to M-Sync and this is going to ask us to reboot the bottle. Just let allow that to happen. And now we're ready to launch the game. So now what we're gonna do is to press the play button. So the first thing that's actually downloading is the Steamworks Common Redistributable and then we're gonna go and install the Rockstar Social Club. And now this is launching, and now we're also installing the Rockstar Games Launcher. So just press continue here, accept the terms and conditions, press continue. 
and make sure that we have the desktop shortcut. Here we're gonna press continue again. And it's also installing some dependencies. So I'm installing Visual C++ 2015. Here it's saying installing service. So here it's saying that it's finished, press close. So it might take a bit of time, but now it's saying updating the Rockstar Games Launcher here. Now it's saying it's connecting to Rockstar Games Services. So the Rockstar Games Launcher is now loading up here. And it's asking us whether we want to use cloud saves. I'm going to enable it. So these cloud saves are attached to our Rockstar account. So now that the game is loading up here. So one thing to be aware of is that the game won't launch correctly unless DirectX 12 mode is turned on. So one thing that you should do is go to Finder, go to Documents, and then go to Rockstar Games, and then go to Red Dead Redemption 2. And uh, what we're going to do is just going to demonstrate that there's going to be a settings file that's going to appear here as the game launches to the main menu. And uh, one thing that you might want to do is to control click on the system.xml and just double check here, open this with text edit, and then you want to scroll down until we find setting API. So this by default is going to say Vulkan, but because I've already enabled DirectX 12, I think what's happened is that it's cloud synchronized that particular setting. So this is something that you need to be aware of. Um, that file is there. So if that is not enabled, then what you need to do is just basically, uh, this should actually crash and then you can open up that file and then make that change and then we can go into the game. So here we're actually loading up the game, just gonna demonstrate that this can actually run on the base M4 Mac mini, albeit very poorly. So if you go to the graphics settings, I was gonna show you what this looks like on the lower settings. So basically it's gonna to default to ultra, which you definitely don't want. Let's put this down to low and then basically you wanna turn everything down to low where possible. And then we're gonna apply changes here. Click yes. And then I'm just gonna show you uh, what in-game looks like. So it might take you a bit of time to actually get this far into the actual game uh, and actually load up. And uh, as you can see, we are dangerously close to the uh, memory limit of this particular Mac mini. So one thing to remember is that video memory and system memory are pulled together. So if you look on the top right hand side of the metal HUD, we are consuming more than 16 gigabytes of memory, which is more than the entire Mac mini M4 has on my particular computer. So you definitely want as much memory as possible. And uh, it seems to run okay but uh, you ideally wanna be running 24 or even 32 gigabytes as a minimum. Uh, and uh, otherwise you're gonna get quite a bad slideshow and definitely a lot of memory pressure. We have the error message on the top left, which is gonna appear anyway, no matter which system that you use. And uh, this memory pressure is pretty bad. If you look at the activity monitor and uh, we kind of check what the memory is like, you can see that we are accessing swap memory. So this is, pretty bad, we're using six gigabytes of swap. So we're using the solid state drive in order to basically perform swap memory, which is really what's tanking the frame rate. Here I'm testing out the game running on the M4 Max MacBook Pro with 48 gigabytes of RAM and 40 GPU cores. Now here the game is running a hell of a lot better. However, it's running at pretty much the lowest settings that you can set at 720p. So getting between 30 and 55 or so FPS is okay. In a lot of the open world sections, we're able to hit about 35 to 55 FPS. And at this stage, I would describe the game as kind of playable. I played it for about an hour and a half and I didn't encounter any serious kind of bugs which stopped any kind of progress. However, I would really expect performance to improve at some point in the future. So this is really early days, especially for getting a very demanding game like Red Dead Redemption 2 working on the Mac. There's a huge amount of performance still left on the table, especially as so many translation layers are at work in here, especially when you consider the fact that this isn't using D3D Metal this is actually using Wine D3D to translate DirectX 12 into Metal using this open source translation layer. And this is pretty much the first demanding DirectX 12 game running through this translation layer. And so our expectations have to be pretty low. The progress that's been made so far is pretty incredible. So the future of Windows Gaming on a Mac looks brighter than ever thanks to the latest version of Crossover Preview. And of course, Crossover 25's full release is just around the corner. I'm expecting all of these new features to be incorporated into the new version. And hopefully we'll get some better performance from Red Dead Redemption 2. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.